I'm going to run the complete blackjack game and you can see how it's supposed to work, not just what the output is, but how it interacts with the keyboard. So first thing, enter your name and then choose a bet between one and a hundred. So I'm going to choose five. Five's not between uh, 10 and a hundred. So I'll choose 101. Again, not between 10 and 100. I'll choose nine, not between. Now you type anything you want in here. Whenever you hit enter, I checked for invalid input instead of crashing the program. If you do a next int and it tries to process a nine, um, it'll get hung, I think, believe it'll get hung up. Uh, or it could have a uh, parsing error. And you don't want your game to quit in the middle because the user might be 10 or 20 or 30 minutes into playing it. And just because they mistype, maybe they type 670 six, instead of 67, you don't want to quit the entire game just because they type something bad in. So we're checking for uh, the correct input, not just a number, but also a number between the minimum bet and the amount of money you have. All right, so let's bet a real amount, 20. All right, so right away, I can see that the bet is 20, the money remaining is 80, and the deal has already happened because here is the player's hand, so they have 11 total, coming from a three and an eight. Now the dealer, all the dealer's showing is an eight, of diamonds, the suit doesn't matter, but the dealer is showing an eight and hiding the second card. So I used a different display method for the dealer compared to the display method I used for the player because I only want to show one dealer card. Until it's the dealer's turn at the end, then you'll see. You don't need to handle doubling, but here we're looking for input again. So I have it to use one, two, or three. And if I type hit enter, it says invalid input because it's waiting for a one, two, or three. So I'm gonna go ahead, I have 11. You don't need to implement double down, although you should double down on 11. All right, so I got a 17. I'm gonna go and stay here. So the dealer has 12, and you can see the pauses here because it takes a couple seconds to print out all of this stuff. If I had no pauses, it would instantly come onto the screen and humans just don't process that fast. So I lost as my name, lost with 17, and you can see the dealer has a 19. I bet 20 and I have 80 remaining. So just from this, I have to be able to get the money, the amount of money and get the bet All right, we are gonna bet again. Let's go 20. So the dealer's showing a nine. Ooh, 15, that's horrible. I'm gonna, oof, I probably should hit the four. Oh, okay, there we go. Let's stand here. Now, I could keep hitting, I'll do, I'm feeling like I'm gonna win this hand. Okay, so the dealer, you can see, stands with a 19. Uh, and oh, I had to scroll down. Okay. So the dealer's still with the 19, which I didn't actually print. I probably should. Uh, so tied with 19, the bet is 20. And you notice I still have the 80 remaining. When you tie, you get your bet back. Um, I did start with 100, but because I bet 20, you can see the $20, you put 20 on the table meaning you have 80 left. And then if you win, you get your 20 back and you get another 20 back. If you tie, you just get your 20 back. And if you lose, your bet goes away and you're just left with 80. All right, so still got, let's uh, raise the stakes. Let's do 40. Bet 40, uh, eight and an ace. Now notice 19 because the ace could be 1 or 11. In this case, it's counting it as 11. Uh, and I'll talk a little more about that later. 
but the get total method that I wrote is a little bit tricky if you have an ace in your hand. You have to do a, a, at least one if statement in there. All right, so the dealer showing a nine. So I'm going to stand. And you can see the dealer has 16 and then hits. And they hit with an ace, bringing them to 17. And then it compared. So I had 19. So my bet was 40. And I now have 120 remaining. All right, let's do something really dumb. Let's put go all in. I'm just going to keep hitting. Should never hit on 18. All right, look at that. Shocker. I busted with a $120 bet. I got $0 left. Uh, let's see. Dealer had a 6. Now, the dealer keeps playing in this game. I'm not sure what happens in a regular casino, but I just had the dealer play the turn out, even if the player busts. And then it compared to the players. Chris lost with 25, bet 120, and has 0 remaining. So that the game's over because I have no more money left. Uh, and anytime you're lower than the minimum bet, the game will end. So let's run again. Uh, if you're going to find that you want to run this and then stop it frequently because you need to fix something that you just noticed, uh, to do that, you do Control Shift Delete, and it will stop right there. So again, it's Control Shift Delete. Not Control Alt Delete, but similar. Control Shift Delete will stop. Uh, and then you can do whatever you need, and then F6 to run it again. Now, I strongly recommend you comment out, enter your name, because you're going to run this a lot. You don't want to keep typing this in. You could hard code in whatever name you want, and I talked about that in an earlier video.